What exactly was Dwarka? We know from ancient texts that the city was located on the western shore of the Indian mainland. We know it was the capital of Yadavs after they migrated from Mathura. We know Lord Krishna made the city's capital and ruled the kingdom from there. And we also know that this fabled city was submerged under huge tsunamis as soon as Krishna left the earth. Dwarka or Dwaravati, the city of doors, finds mention in many Sanskrit epics including the Mahabharata, Harivansha, Bhagavad Puran, Skanda Puran and the Vishnu Puran. The scriptures record that the city was built on the sunken remains of a previous kingdom, Kushasthari, which itself was built on older ruins. In the Mausala Parva of Mahabharata, after Krishna departed from earth about 36 years after the war, Arjun went to Dwarka to bring Krishna's grandsons and remaining Yadavs to safety. Arjun has described the submergence as the sea, which has been beating against the shores, suddenly broke the boundary that was imposed on it by nature. The sea rushed into the city. It coursed through the streets of the beautiful city. The sea covered up everything in the city. I saw the beautiful buildings becoming submerged one by one. In a matter of few moments, it was all over. The sea had now become as placid as a lake. There was no trace of the city. Dwarka was just a name, just a memory. So let's take a look at some archaeological findings for Dwarka. Before the underwater ruins were discovered, most scholars were of the view that the Mahabharat was just a mythological epic and it would be futile to look for the remains of Dwarka. However, with the discovery of submerged remains of Dwarka by the Marine Archaeology Unit, that is MAU, jointly formed by the National Institute of Oceanography, NIO, and the Archaeological Survey of India, ASI, Dwarka was no longer just a myth. This exploration was undertaken under the guidance of Dr. S. R. Rao. Dr. Rao is widely considered the grandfather of Indian archaeology and has served the ASI for over 32 years. He is credited with the discovery of a large number of Indus Saraswati sites, including the port city of Lothal in Gujarat. Between 1983 to 1990, the well-fortified township of Dwarka was discovered, extending more than half a mile from the shore. In his work, The Lost City of Dwarka, Dr. Rao has given scientific details of these discoveries and artifacts. The findings of Beit Dwarka can be divided into two broad periods. The proto-historic period, which includes a seal, two inscriptions, a copper fish hook, and late Harappan pottery. The second is the historical period, which consists of two coins, ship anchors, and pottery. Just as described in the scriptures, the township was built in six sectors along the bank of a river. The foundation of boulders on which the city's walls were erected proves that the land was reclaimed from the sea. Mahabharat mentions a prasad which corresponds to the high fort wall of Dwarka, a part of which is extant. The epic says that flags were flying in the city of Dwarka, which can again be corroborated by the stone bases of flag posts found in the seabed excavation. Significant antiquity that further corroborates a statement of the Harimamsha is the seal bearing the motif of a three-headed animal representing the bull, unicorn and goat. The text states that every citizen of Dwarka had to carry a seal as a mark of identification and the seal recovered from the seabed matches with the scriptural description. The obvious next question is, what led to the submergence of this massive trading city? The answer lies in the progressive rise in the sea levels witnessed over thousands of years of tectonic upheavals taking place in the womb of the planet. In one of the major studies of its kind, scientists at the National Institute of Oceanography have developed a sea level variation history of the last 14,500 years BP, that is before present, for the western coast of India. The curve shows that 14,500 years ago, sea level along the west coast of India was about 100 meters lower as compared to the present and rose to 80 meters depth around 12,500 years ago with a rate of approximately 10 meters per thousand years. It was followed by a quiet period when the level remained unchanged for about 2,500 years, thus providing time for civilization to flourish before being engulfed by the sea again. From 10,000 to 7,000 years ago, sea level rose at a very high rate of 20 meters per thousand years. And after approximately 7,000 years before present, 
it has fluctuated to more or less the present level. The animation above shows how the shoreline has changed over thousands of years and how much land has been lost to the sea. All along the peninsula, we have most certainly lost civilizations at various stages of development and out of these, Dwarka was one of the most prominent ones. In the first major event at about 7600 BCE, the first metropolis found in the underwater ruins appears to have succumbed to the tectonic forces and the sea appears to have inundated it. Because of this catastrophe, people would have proceeded north to the higher sea level and established the second metropolis. From our point of view, the older site of 7600 BCE could very well correspond to Kushasthari, as mentioned in the scriptures which would have been the foundation of Sri Krishna's Dwarka and the second settlement of 4000 to 2800 BCE would then be the tentative time frame of the existence of golden city of Krishna. This also got affected by faulting due to earthquakes around 4000 years before present and was destroyed by the second earthquake or the last earthquake around 2780 plus or minus 150 years before present when the sea transgressed to completely submerge. Dr. S. R. Rao, after his careful research, made the following statement. The findings in Dwarka and archaeological evidence found are compatible with the Mahabharata tradition and removes the lingering doubt about the historicity of the Mahabharata. We would say that Krishna existed. So if you like our video, then follow our page Satyalok on Instagram and help us spread the greatness of ancient Indian epics to as many people as we can. Stay tuned, stay educated and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Vandana Santu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.